Hey everybody, what's up? It's Geisker from the Basco Scenario bringing to you another Un Momento, and this one is on the Falcon Winter Soldier Episode 5. As we all know from yesterday's episode uh, of the Roundtable on Comic Chats, um, this episode by far, most of the panel loved the episode, and so did I. So it's been a long time since uh, we've seen them, you know, running, bouncing at the sky trail there in civil war you know the little back and forths back then kind of pretty much hinted that it it would be pretty cool on a show by themselves so this episode starts off with the fire action scene where you see captain america runs into this kind of abandoned warehouse where it's like a standoff right and this kind of gives you civil war vibes correct right you just see them all standing there just like when you know bucky was there with cap iron man in the middle and you know what happened next right we got some of this stuff going on so what a crazy ass scene now the whole chemistry with uh, Bucky and Sam throughout this whole series has been just augmenting episode after episode. And this one, by far, you see the camaraderie. It wasn't snappy jokes. It was like two men on a mission to become something bigger. And the fight scene, they both had to come together and to fight. They had to, you know, to beat them, they had to fight like a team. And that's what they did with the jackpack. And this is when they break uh walker's arm right off so what a crazy scene so fast forwarding to the trial i kind of felt sympathy for him here because he was right to be pissed off big time because like he clearly says they made him they trained him they made him they chose him to be the Captain America. And he was trying to fill up some big shoes, but let's face it, no one liked this guy in the beginning. But as we moved along, he started to grow on me a bit, you know? And then we get Elaine, or how would we call her? Constantina Valentina Fontaine. I didn't like the fact they casted her because the first time, that first scene when she see her face, I'm like, Elaine? She's on Marvel? Not that there's anything wrong with that. And then we get our new cutie freckled carrot top kid. You know, the victim of the movie. We all feel bad for her. Quickly turn around, now I just want to see her get slapped around and someone put her in her place. Mean, but true. Uh, and then Zemo. Ah, uh, Zemo. He had all this planned out. He wanted to die. He was ready for Bucky to come and finish him off. Just like that side picture there, back in Civil War. He had deleted the message from his cell phone that had the recording of his wife, and he was ready to take his life. But the Black Panther didn't allow him. And those famous lines, the living still have plans for you. So here he is with Bucky, who comes in, crazy scene. Like, the, the you know, they're back uh, from um, Age of Ultron. Forgot the place, so. Sokovia, that's it, Sokovia. And they have the face off, or face off. Bucky comes to finish it. So, Bucky's got a gun. So, yeah, you thought I was going to sing more than that. No, not going to do that. I'll, I'll spare you the misery. But he had it all planned out. Remember, he took Bucky's book, and he even said, I crossed it out for you. So when he pulled that trigger and just heard a click, he was surprised. Because remember, again, Bucky was an assassin. Bucky's moving away from that persona he doesn't want to be the killer now comes to the one of the deepest 
most realist scenes out there. And I know some people might think, here we go, the whole race card and this and that. But in all honesty, it needed to be done. Because Isaiah is a man that suffered a lot in the past and he has his hate and he's allowed to have that hate for everything he's gone through. But then you have Sam from a different generation who believes in hope, believes in the time has come where maybe a black Captain America could be, you know, just like back in the day, nobody thought there would ever be a black president and we got one. So these lines that were said in this part here was really deep, you know, where Isaiah tells him no, no self conscious black man would accept to be Captain America. Strong, strong words, man. And I can't even come close to comprehend what it would be to wear that skin color from my life and be discriminated as much. And, you know, I said in the beginning of the season, you know, I hope they don't try to do so much race stuff with this, but they did, but they did it properly. So I'm glad they did that. So after Sam leaves this part, he decides to go back home because I don't blame him. I would want to go back home after that conversation and be surrounded by family and people that support me. But I'm going to fast forward to the end because I'm going to skip the whole Sharon Carter thing and everything like that. And Walker going back to uh, well, Hawkins' house and, you know, kind of lying, well, lying about, you know, he got killed the person that killed you know, Hawkins, which was a bunch of bullshit. And but you kind of see his sister in that scene, right? Like, doesn't really truly believe him. So he comes back to the whole, goes back to the South, goes back home. You have Bucky and him building up, the, fixing up the ship, uh, the boat, actually. Um, training. It's good to see Bucky that, you know, he can sleep on a couch now and not on the floor anymore. So, again, showing the, you know, the advancement of the, of the character, right? That they're getting over their... They're, they're getting ready to face their demons, kind of, right? And, you know, this, the little clip there on the bottom left where they train, he gets a pep talk from Sam. Bucky knows that he has to go back and it's not about him. It's about what he can do for the people that, the survivors that he hurt. So it's all about stepping to the next level. Sam accepting that he has to become the next Captain America and Bucky knowing that he has to make amends with the people that he hurt when he was the Winter Soldier. Uh, this episode was absolutely amazing. I, like, I can go on for hours. And then it comes with this scene, the freaking box where we actually think we're going to get a glimpse, but we all know what's coming, right? Is it going to look exactly like that? Maybe not, but I'm freaking excited. It's going to be amazing this last episode this week. Can't wait. It's going to be fire. And those are my one moment thoughts. Please, if you haven't already and you like this content or feel pity for me, hit that subscribe, hit that bell, thumbs up. Thank you. Catch you on the flip side.